everybody, this is Waldorf. And this is Statler. And we're continuing. This time we're going to look at the path of cosmology. That's pronounced cosmetology. For the beta 2.0 release. Yes. So, cosmology has the duality. So, really you're getting two spells for every, you're getting, level, every <laughs> yes, choice. Yes, you're getting double the spells. Twice the spells, twice the fun. It's really, this is a, that's a, this one's kind of really nice because of that. Doubling up on spells. Um, so, what do we got in cosmology? We've got, we'll start with the equilibrium. This spell ends the next time you attempt to cast a non-bound cosmology spell. If that spell is a chaos version, the caster gains plus one to cast. So if you cast... So if you have this first one going, which is the cosmos, right, and then you flip and cast the other one, you get plus one to cast. Correct. So as long as you're switching back and forth, right. you're getting the and boost. Keeping the equilibrium between the two, you get the boost. Yes, if the guy doesn't dispel it in between. Correct. And dispelling on the in between breaks up that. Yes. Okay, so it's a nice bonus. So kind of it somewhat makes these point cheaper to cast. Somewhat. Right. Well, it makes them easier to cast, but the casting values, in, you just have to argue whether the casting values are high or low or whatever. But, um, and it's kind of neat because you, you, you can do the bouncing back and forth between the, uh, between chaos and cosmology. Cosmos. Cosmos. <laughs> and, uh, and make your opponent think about whether they want to stop a spell or not. The, uh, yeah, if nothing else, they break up your plus one thing. Yeah. Okay, right. brings us to the number one spell, which the base wizard can have. Altered Sight. It's uh, for uh, Cosmos, it's a, an augment, and for Chaos, it's, an, it's a hex. Last one turn. Cosmos, it's uh, target gains plus one weapon skill, plus one defense skill, and plus one to their weapon's aim. For Chaos, the target suffers uh, minus one uh, offensive skill, minus one defensive skill, and minus one to their uh, weapon's aim. Range of 24, only needs a 6 to cast. Um, so it's uh, it's a helpful spell, especially if you're a... I think if you're a shooty army, a plus 1 uh, to weapons aim is very nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, especially if you've got something that's a scary shooting thing. Um, plus 1 offensive, defensive, it's going to depend you know, what you're fighting against. Yeah. Plus 1 to shoot with hit with your war machine is kind of nice. Yep. yep, that's what I'm saying. It's got something with some oomph behind it. Yes. You're, you're kind of happy. It makes people scary. Yeah. Um, brings us to the touch of the heart, which is a focused augment um, that lets you recover a health point for casting of eight. Or you can go with the chaos version, which is a focused hex direct damage, which target suffers one hit that automatically wounds with no saves of any kind allowed. Yeah, this is better than the old version. <laughs> it is, because the old one allowed you ward saves right. or regens or mm -hmm. whatever, but this one does not. So, it's also a range of twenty-four. Yeah, these um, used to all be eighteens. Yeah, pretty much. So that's a nice. This is a, that's a nice spell. Yep, get that one little point back on your character, your gribbly, or you get to uh, start wounding his. You know, start wounding their griblies or their characters, or get rid of a champion <laughs> <laughs> before he can do anything. Before he can protect the other guy from exactly. accepting a challenge. It could be really annoying if your opponent has one of those champions that has like a nice magic item. <laughs> <laughs> or just put a wound on a character and yeah. start hurting him. Now he's got to think twice about getting him into a combat. <laughs> and he may. And there's some characters that some armies have, they have no other way to hurt them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah. You start getting two wounds on somebody's wizard, they're going to get kind of concerned. They're, they're going to be dispelling this every time, chance they get. Concerned. Yes. And you can start casting other stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Brings us to number three spell, Ice and Fire. Um, Cosmos, it's a hex, a missile, and a damage. Same with Chaos. It's instant, uh, casts on an eight. Range is 24 again. Uh, targets for the Cosmos version, target suffers 2d6 strength, four hits. Armor penetration, zero. Divine attacks, flaming attacks, and magical attacks. Uh, it's got better strength than it used to have. So it got better range and better strength. And better range, yes. Yeah, that's big. Um, the Chaos version target suffers 2d6 uh, hits with strength 4 and AP 3. <laughs> this is an absolutely terrifying thing to uh, 
Equitane. Have cast against a lot of things. <laughs> Anything yes. that's well armored. Any monstrous cav, monster or heavy cav does not want this thing going off. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, and the one above, you know, it's nice if you're going against uh, stuff that has, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, critters uh, that have the five up uh, ward save and otherworldly. There we otherworldly. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that's called now. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, both good versions of that spell. Mm hmm. Next one we have is the Perception of Strength. That's what I have. Uh, <laughs> if you cast the Cosmos, it's an augment that you gain plus one strength and plus one AP. You can cast it at the Chaos and become a Hex that suffers, target suffers minus one strength and minus one AP. Um, it's a nice spell. Minus one strength and minus one AP is pretty good. Um, yes, yeah, I think it's a helpful spell. Um, Especially, I mean, I like the uh, the plus one strength. <laughs> so plus one strength yeah, is good. You know, um, especially if you're playing with guys that are you know strength three or strength four, it can make the it can really make the difference in getting through things. Um, so yeah, it's really for your grinding units. It's a great mm -hmm. augment. And then if you've got somebody who's who's messing with you on the lower end, man, the, I don't think the hex is as useful all the time, but sometimes it can be. If you can get a guy instead of. He's at AP one now. He's at AP zero. Right. And you've got some knights. You're a lot happier. <laughs> you're much happier. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Uh, brings us to the unit, the first spell in the Wizard Master Zone, the Unity in Divergence, mm. um, augment for uh, Cosmos, and it's a hex direct damage for uh, Chaos. Cast on eleven, so put some put some five dice behind this yeah, thing. You're putting dice behind this <laughs> yep. one. Range is twenty four. The um, Cosmos version uh, lasts one turn. Chaos is instant. Um, Cosmos, all models in the target unit gain Aegis 5. Just a wonderful thing. Yep. Um, of course, you're paying a lot to cast it. Um, then we have uh, the Chaos version. Each model in the target unit suffers a hit with Strength 3, Armor Penetration 0, and Magical Attacks. That's really good. So against any type of big block horde that has minimal armor, it's not going to like this thing going off. Yeah, I just played a game. A guy did that on my uh, Nasher herd. Yeah, that wouldn't be nice. Half of the unit dies <laughs> yeah. on average. It's yeah, terrible. yeah. It's a good spell. Yeah, any elves are just cry when this thing right. is going against them. At least you get armor. You <laughs> yeah. get elves, even if it's a six. Uh, Sylvan elves, yeah. <laughs> that gives us the Truth of Time, the number six spell. As an augment, it lasts a turn. Uh, cast on an eight, range of 24. Unit with at least one model affected by this spell... Oh, basically you roll an extra die for for charge, flee, pursue, overrun. You roll an additional die, D6. Six, yes. And the hex version is kind of flips over and does the opposite. You roll one less D6. So you basically take away strip, swift stride from a unit. If it's a, wow, well, I guess if it's a infantry, they're moving one D6. They're charging one D6 plus four. Right? Yep. Yes, yes. It rolls one additional die. What's yes. unclear to me on the first one is it says one additional d6. It doesn't say you take away the this d6. Right? You know, with Swift Stride, you roll 3d6, you take away one one of them. Well, the Swift Stride rule says you roll 3d6 and take the highest two. Correct. This would be you roll 4d6. It doesn't change the take away the highest and keep the highest two. You know what I'm saying? That's my the question. rule says you keep That's the highest question. two. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that this will give you a D6, but that rule is going to be... That's clear enough. Right. That's what I wasn't sure about. The okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> if because, the rule was written that, that you discard the lowest... Because an infantry says case. you roll 2D6. It doesn't say anything about keeping the highest two. That's correct. Oh. That's a good point. They need to fix that, don't they? Yeah, so... Because it does not say you discard the... So is this adding to your charge distance? Because, so, because frankly, Swift Stride only rolling an extra d6 is not that big of a. It's not that big of a deal for Swift Stride. Yeah, it doesn't. Really You're already help rolling you. three dice. Yeah, there's a lot of times this the, isn't going to help you. Yeah, the probability of it helping is quite small. The second, the Chaos one is always going to be good, but going to be fantastic. But uh, yeah, so I'm wondering. You're right. If, it does not say that. Yeah, does I'm wondering it? if it gives you an extra d6 movement. Huh. Okay. Um. Even with that in question, yes, I still think this is a very nice path. Th this is a very nice path. 
Um, it got better than what it was. The they've, ranges increased. The damage it. increased. The damage increased. Ranges increased. They've simplified a couple spells. Yes. Um, and flipping back and forth isn't that big of a deal because a lot of these have both sides are good. I think it's easy. The old version, which was you had to you kind of stick with one to get the bonus. And then the you get a bigger bonus, but you had to, because some of them were bad, some of them were good. So and then you got the automatic flip at the end. So I think this uh, this makes it you have to think a lot harder on the order you want to cast things, right? And what you want, what you don't want, and your opponent has to think about does he want to stop the uh, the bonus a little sooner or what's going on. But yeah, it's. Right. Uh, it's a, I, I like this path a lot. It's a nice path. I'm definitely going thumbs up on this path. Yep, thumbs up for me. All right. Thanks for listening. Till next time.